Hello Happy Woodworkers, Mayanna here with Heartwood Art and today I'm going to give you the tips and tricks I use to build this material support shelf for my miter saw station. If you like these tips, be sure to subscribe to the Heartwood Art YouTube channel and come on over to heartwoodart.com and see the whole miter saw station build. So let's dive in. Well, as you can see, I already have one finish built and I'll show you the tips and tricks on that. And then over here, I have one dry fitted for us that I can dismantle and show you how I did everything. So let's talk about the measurements that I had to take and probably one of the most important for knowing your length on this is to check for cross cutting at an angle, okay? And so you wanna make sure that you have room that you're not butting up against this and you have some room for it. And don't assume that both sides are the same. Most miter saws aren't. This one goes significantly further on this side. So I cut a cross angle on it. I also had to shorten my support for that. Let me get this fully out of the way. I had to shorten the support for it and cut an angle. Not only so this would not hit, but that I could have room to get my knuckles across this to be able to move it again. So look at that for your uh, cuts. And this one, I may just cut off this corner just need to be it here to give myself just a little more room. So one of the other measurements that you're going to, want to take is to make sure this thing is dead level with this because you can have your material rocking on here, right? So dead level, check your height on this. Here's how I did mine. Now use the longest level you've got. I've actually got a much longer level, but I want to keep this one short for the video, but don't use those little speedo levels for this. And don't assume that your bench is level. Mine's in the garage. It's a slightly sloped. It's not dead level. So be sure that you set it on your bench and check that level first. And then put that bubble right in between on your drive fit to make sure they're good. Now, if you're bowing up a little bit, you may want to press on this because it is a dry fit. It's not nailed down. And make sure that you're dead level and do that on both sides, right? Okay. And so the next big measurement that you're going to want to take is for the back. I set mine off of this rail by 1 8 inch. Why? Because this steel rail is the one that keeps your material straight. Not that one. This is not going to wobble and wave and bow. This eventually will. Okay. So here's how I decided what an eighth of an inch was off. I put this big metal ruler on here. And I put it as far as I could go so it would be on both sides of this rail so I know it's dead flat and then as far down as I could go on that. And then I found something in my shop that was an eighth of an inch thick. The bottom end of this file is just that. And I went poking along through there until I got this thing square and straight all the way down because you can't afford for it to walk in on any end of it, right? And once I did that, I drew a line for that. So that's how I decided to put it an eighth of an inch back. So you're saying, well, if that's if that rail is not there to keep things straight, what is it for? I'll show you. Stop block. <laughs> so all you have to do is put a little clamp on here and there you go. Now I can make cut after cut after cut be exactly the same length. Super easy to put it on either side. And you can even put a tape measure on these or down your rail if you want to for that too. So that keeps it even. Another thing that you're going to look at is if you have a clamp to hold your work, and I use this all the time. I love this. Make sure everything stays good and steady while I'm cutting and I don't have to have my hands in there. Well, you can see that I had to cut out a notch here for that. It's this notch below that for the actual bottom foot of the clamp. But I also had to cut out a little bit for this arm to make sure that it passed through too. And you're going to want to look at your height of your backboard to make sure that where this thing is. Now, I'm usually cutting the thickest thing I'm probably going to cut through here is a 2x4. And that's what I put down here and pulled it up. But you want to check the highest thing that you cut or just take this out altogether. You don't have to try to notch it. Just cut it off there. And you have to get a longer stop block on this side. But there you go. So that's the other thing that you need to measure for. So let's talk a little bit about assembly. And I'm going to take this top board off so I can show you how I did this. 
So for the backboard, I put in pocket hole screws. I only use two. It keeps it sturdy and fine. Now, when I screwed in this one, you have to really stand up on this thing because it will walk. It's a lot easier if you have a couple of people. I don't have a couple of people. It's just me. So <laughs> here's what I do. I put my support blocks right up against it. And then I took pink hands and I put it against it all the way down too. And then I stood up on it and that really helped a lot to try to keep it safe. Now, when I put in this one, the back end walked on it. I put it right back on that line and I could get really heavy on it, almost standing on it on this end to get this one in and hold it in. Of course, it was already anchored up here. So that was very helpful. Now, for the support boards, I see some people putting two screws in here and two down. You only need a couple. It's just a little support. It's not going to go anywhere. Two points contact is more than enough just to support the tabletop of it, right? So I put one pocket hole about midway to go to the back. And then I put this one a few inches in, and it's on the inside of it as well. So it's hidden. It's in the shadows. You can't really see it. Now, I decided to screw in um, this, this one first on this end. And, of course, that made this end walk a little bit. So to ensure that was square, just got out my little speed square, right? And make sure that if it walked a little bit, you get it back dead square because you don't want that thing cockeyed and pushing on your backboard that has to remain straight, right? Now, for the top, when I put that on, I just use brad nails. I turned up the air pressure just a little bit to make sure that they were driven well through the surface of it because I don't want scratches as I'm pulling things across here. And that worked out very well. And, uh, you know, a little powered brad nailer makes super quick work of that. And if you think that you can't see the line or whatever and stay straight, then just lay one of your support pieces on there and then put your brad nailer against that and that'll keep you straight to make sure that you're actually hitting into your supports. Okay, so the other thing that I want to tell you about why I chose the length on these that I did. As you can see, they're short from the lip of the table. And I actually brought my tabletop out a little bit, so I have about a two inch lip on here as well. And I cut them short and I didn't put them all the way to the end. Why? Because I intend to store my Craig jig things here. I'm cutting all this wood right here. Why in the world would I want to haul it all over the shop if I'm gonna be putting pocket holes in it and I do that a lot? Why not have all my material here? And then on the very end, I've got a place to clamp and work and do my Craig jig things on there. Alrighty, those are all the tips. I hope this has been helpful to you in building the shelf for your miter saw station. Come on over to heartwoodart.com and see the series for the whole build. And I'll see you in the shop.